Hello my book loving friends. This one is Kelly Armstrong's latest, Someone is Always Watching. When they were kids, Obedient Blythe and Bad Boy Tucker became best friends when they got revenge on their babysitter by throwing a rock through her car window. It's an act that forges an unbreakable bond, but recent events having, have them pretending to keep their distance. That is, until their friend Gabrielle starts to act weird, and the principal at their corporate-owned STEM school is murdered. Can Blythe, Tucker, and their friends figure out what's really going on, and can they even trust their own families? Kelly Armstrong is a Canadian best-selling author whose books have been beloved for more than 20 years. She's written some well-loved fantasy that she's well known for, including the Bitten series. This book is young adult fiction set in a high school with more of a science fiction than fantasy slant. Uh, I love the dark, gritty cover of this book and was drawn to the mysterious school, which is sponsored and run by a science lab that the characters' parents all work for. It has that Buffy meets dark academia thing that I thought sounded very intriguing. You know fairly, on, fairly early on, fairly early on, <laughs> that there must be some kind of shady program going on with the school and they're doing something to the students, creating a curious mystery that you find yourself invested in. I also liked the lead characters, the group of high school friends who've known each other for years, each with their own little story that we unravel in the course of the book. It's a great setup for the book and I wanted to like this one, but as it goes forward, the plot falters a little bit, losing its way and not offering much in the way of twists and turns that we didn't see coming. It feels a little unsatisfying and some characters feel like they were added in for one or two plot points or as tokens and then forgotten about or just underutilized. Uh, it feels a little unsatisfying, but it's not terrible. The bigger issue I have is the book's conclusion when all the truth comes out at the end and earlier on in the book too, in some places, it seems to really gloss over narcissistic and sociopathic personality disorders as though they're kind of cute. Like it's okay if your friend is a violent and manipulative psychopath or if they murder or kidnap or drug people, as long as they like you. Apparently it's fine as long as they're not a danger to anyone who doesn't deserve it, as the book says. And who decides that? What happens when they decide that you deserve it, when you've done something wrong in their eyes? This book doesn't show the love bombing, gaslighting, abuse, and other toxic and dangerous behaviors of these disorders and makes them seem like a neurodivergent personality type or something like that that's just misunderstood, romanticizing it in such a way that it suggests that the people with these personality disorders can be loving towards special people who just understand them. The book also says at one point that no one knows or agrees on a definition of what these personality types are as a way to dismiss it. And this is just absolutely untrue. I think that this idea is really dangerous, especially if this book is aimed at younger readers. The wishful thinking that you can change someone who is abusive by just offering them the understanding that they never had or by being special in some way permeates this book. And it worries me. Uh, this book contains murder, violence, trauma, mind control, mental health issues, abusive relationships, a kidnapping, and it also mentions pedophilia and sexual assault. So <laughs> I was initially thinking that I should suggest a trigger warning, maybe. Um, it's not a gratuitous book, but th those themes are all in there. But then I thought, you know, these themes and subjects just seem to be turning up in so much recent fiction of all genres that trigger warning almost seems redundant. Um, but yeah, on the whole, this is not a badly written book. I didn't hate it. It has, you know, a couple of flaws, but it's not terrible. But the message that narcissists and sociopaths are just misunderstood and that murder is okay if you didn't really mean it just seems like a bit questionable, especially if it is meant to be aimed at a high school uh, age range. So yeah, but thank you to the publisher for the copy of this one so I could review it and share it with you guys. You can check out some of my other videos. I also have another channel and social, so you can find links below if you want more of that. And if you want to hang out again, remember to like and subscribe. And you can always leave a comment, let me know what you thought, or let me know what else you might want to see. Thank you.